Hey, Against the Tide Media viewers. Welcome to Talking Back with Tara and Barb. I'm Tara. And I'm Barb. And we're here this week at the Christian Worldview Filmmakers Guild and Film Festival. We are so pleased to be able to introduce to you today someone whose work you've seen in some of the most popular faith-based films to hit the silver screen, such as Overcomer, Mom's Night Out, and War Room. Welcome, Mary Smith. Hi, guys. <laughs> Tell us, what do you do? I'm a professional makeup artist, hairstylist, and I also do some wardrobe. And recently I got to do a little production design, so it was a little out of the box for oh. me and fun. So basically the vanities, all things creative, that's kind of up my alley. But the main thing would be makeup is, I guess, what my main focus is. How did you get your start in this industry? Well, I kind of fell into it. It was not anything I ever planned. I was going to a church called Sherwood Baptist, which many people mm -hmm. know of now. That is where the Kendrick brothers were. And I went to the same church. Our kids played with each other, <laughs> you know, and just all things with the film happened there. I didn't even know when they first started and they filmed Flywheel. Most yes. of the church had no idea they were even doing it. Mm. It was just this small little group. Alex will tell you that a lot of days he was the only person there that he would walk and he would like hit the camera and walk in front. He would slate himself <laughs> and then he would put it down and he'd go sit down and he'd give it a minute and then he would do his scene and then he would go, Cut. and he would get up and go turn it off and wow. stuff and he was doing it all like a one-man show in a lot of days when they were filming it so I didn't even know that was happening until after it was done and then they were showing it for our church and it was going to be used like a ministry tool for mm -hmm. you know local theater and you know that was kind of the intent of it to begin with and it just took off and then they did facing the giants and on facing the giants I was asked hey can you help with the makeup because a mm -hmm. friend of mine at the time I was selling Mary Kay, which uh -huh. a lot of women are familiar with, because I had four girls. Oh, wow. And when you have four girls who need skincare and need makeup, <laughs> you know, you figure this out. You're on your budget. How can you do this? Well, I'm going to sell it so I can get the cost you know, the, of the products less, you know, and maybe make a little money on the side. But it was mainly so I could just keep my girls with their stuff. Mm -hmm. So this other girlfriend that did Mary Kay's knew that I knew something about makeup. So it was like, hey, can you, can you come help? I was like, oh, sure. All right, and so she, I had to meet Curry Bushnell, who was the department head over makeup, and Curry is a professionally trained makeup artist. He used to do it back in Hollywood. He was uh, makeup for Connie Chung mm -hmm. on ABC, if you remember back yeah. then. Mm -hmm. There was a show in the 70s called Silver Spoons with Ricky Schroeder. He was on that makeup team. Oh, so wonderful. he knows all that stuff. So I had to learn the Curry Bushnell way because it's very different. Like, I would do makeup for you. Mm -hmm. just for everyday wear and what we actually do on film is different. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn that. So I kind of learned on facing the giants and, you know, just absorbed. Well, here comes the next one down the pike, which was fireproof. And mm -hmm. we do boot camp and we're all there. And Curry goes, oh, by the way, you're key on this. And I said, oh. excuse me, what? Because <laughs> I didn't even know what it meant. And I'm like, and what is that? You know, what does that mean? And he said, you're me until I get on set. Because I can't be on set mm -hmm. until five every day because he had another job. You know, mm -hmm. he was no longer in the industry. He lived in Albany, Georgia. He had another job. So you're me. I'm going to set the looks. You're going to implement those looks, and you're in charge. And I'm like, mm -hmm. whoa. You know, <laughs> so I make the joke. I was, uh, it was my trial by fire was fireproof. <laughs> <laughs> and David Perfect. Nixon was our first AD. He had also done Facing the giant, So I knew David, and David was professional out of Orlando. So I said, hey, David, this is my first day being key. If you see anything that I need to fix, you know, let me know. And he goes, well, that wouldn't be my job now, would it? Oh. And I was like, hello. <laughs> so it became my goal in life to know everything I needed to know and to never have to be called. <laughs> I would mm. always be on top of it and to watch that monitor and learn what that meant. So I was like, the sponge absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. In between that shooting and shooting Courageous, my husband's job took us to Orlando, which mm -hmm. I got to go to makeup artist school in Orlando for that year. Took us to, went right back to Albany, Georgia, shot Courageous. And then right after that, there was a faith-based film that I'd seen on television that was coming to our area. Mm -hmm. And my husband said, you ought to see if you, you know, if you want to work on that, just see. And I was like, huh, okay. So <laughs> I like sent him a little email. I looked up the production company and said, you know, I'm finishing shooting Courageous. I don't know if the dates are going to conflict, but you know, I'd love just to come help out. You know, I'm thinking low person down in the apartment. 
I end up being hired as the department head, Aww. which I should have never been. <laughs> you had no clue what I was doing, but I got put into that position and I had a, the hair guy, every other person on that crew was from LA. Mm. So I am the lone local-ish <laughs> person. Everybody else is professional. Mm. So this hair guy comes in and he was picked up real quick that I was clueless. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna handle the continuity book for both of us. Aww. And I'm gonna teach you how to do this job. So he taught me how mm. to do it. He taught me the differences between union sets yep. and non-union yes. sets. He taught me the rules. He taught me all of these things. So God has put me in a position every single time to just learn, learn, learn. And it was not anything I ever said, you know, I think I'm going to do this. <laughs> I just got thrown into it. And so it's been a huge learning curve. And I learned something every set I go on, every position I go on, I learn something new and I keep growing. And I think that's a huge part of it is that you have to be flexible. Mm. That should be your middle name. If you work on a film set, it should be flexibility mm -hmm. because if you've ever been on one, things happen, things change rapidly, and you can't be so married to the script, how everything is ordered and scheduled because they may decide to change it. Mm -hmm. You might have weather change it. You might have an actor get sick and change it. You know, you can't just be rigid. You have to be able to be flexible. And I just learned from all of it. Wow, that's awesome. That is yeah. <laughs> what a story. That's great. <laughs> that is absolutely delightful to hear. Wow. So talking about the history of what you've done, what have you seen kind of changes in the in the industry over the last 10 years or so, and particularly in Christian films or in any kind of projects? Well, from the perspective of the department that I work in, the biggest change is cameras have gotten so much better. Mm. I've been doing this for mm. 15 years. And so even at the beginning, we were starting to get the good, <laughs> uh -huh. but it has rapidly just very rapidly progressed. Whereas maybe our makeup and our processes have not been able to catch up quite as fast. Mm. And there's been a learning curve because back in the day, but when you had film before you had HD and all that stuff, you know, even original black and white Hollywood. If you look at the history of it, you can look up and Google and see photos of what the makeup looked like when you were doing black and white. It is amazing to look at because think right. contouring that you see on like the your Instagram influencers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, but think of it in a, like a gray, all gray makeup, gray scales. That's what was done mm -hmm. for black and white because you lose the features in black and white. The makeup has to be where it really accentuates the features. So if I were to look at you and not on camera with that on, you would look like the biggest clown. But on film, it looked fabulous. Mm -hmm. And then you know, it evolved where they had color and then now we have HD. And the difference with HD, oh. because beforehand, you would put the makeup on kind of heavy that would give you that flawless mm -hmm. sort of finish. Not with HD, you see every single pore, every little minuscule thing. So if you put the makeup on heavy, it's going to look heavy. It's going to look caked on. They're going to look bad. It's not going to look good. So you have to learn and have to get products that are highly pigmented mm. so that you can apply very sheer like it's a second skin. And there's a lot of learning curve in that. If you take somebody that's used to doing, let's say, bridal makeup, <laughs> mm. and then you put them on, I'm going to work in a movie. It's really heavy, really, you know, not natural, not good. And there's a huge learning curve with that. And I really think it's, it's, that's the biggest thing I've noticed is that the technology, the technology in one sense has been fabulous, but for our department, it's kind of hurt us because we've had to like get real creative wow. and learn how to make it look appropriate. Man, I can tell you're good at your craft. I've heard makeup language I've not heard before. So this has been really fun. So... <laughs> Your first day on a film set really isn't your first day where you take your makeup oh, no. with you. So what happens before that first day on set? The first thing I would say for me is I want to get my hands on a script. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I can get that with several weeks ahead. That's not always the case depending on when you're called and what you're doing. But a lot of times with a feature, I'll get it maybe four weeks out. Mm -hmm. I will probably have read that script in the neighborhood of at least 10 times, sometimes more, wow. by the time I actually step foot on set and I've broken that script down because I want to get to the point that I am th really thinking these characters, mm. you know, how mm -hmm. do these characters look, not just how they look overall, but how do they look within this scene? 
You know, they may have just rolled out of bed. Well, that's a no makeup makeup. They're not going to look fully made up, but they are. Mm -hmm. And then it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, then they got ready to go to work. Well, what does their work look look like? How we change that? What are we going to do here? All right. Now they've just come home from work. That makeup should not look quite so fresh if we're going to keep this kind of realistic in the, you know, in the realm of how how would you and I look? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not going to be as crisp and as fresh and as whatever. And sometimes, depending on the characters and depending on what the directors would like and that kind of thing, you may what I call Hollywood it, where it's not true to life. But for if we are being more true to life, then maybe the lipstick's not as heavy and you know crisp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's muted, you know, because she came off from work and maybe she's supposed to look tired right there. So you wouldn't have everything fresh and crisp. So it's a breakdown of even within every script day, what is that person's character doing? How does it change? Are they crying in this scene? Mm -hmm. You know, okay, we've got to make sure we have tears because they can't always cry on cue. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to fix that sometimes. And I always really laugh because the scripts always say, one tear slowly rides down the, <laughs> the left cheek and drops. And I'm like, really people? <laughs> you know, it has to be that, you know, it's just funny how it's written sometimes. But mm -hmm. yeah, so I break all that down. And then I also get the schedule to know because you never shoot things in order. Mm -hmm. right? People who are not in film world, they think, oh, it goes from this point all the way to that point. No, no. <laughs> it's completely like mixed up. Mm -hmm. And you have to be so up on the continuity because you might shoot something here and then two weeks later, you're shooting the piece that when they yes. get it in the editing bay, that's going to fit together. And these looks have to match. Yep. So there comes to where you're taking lots of photos and you're making notes and you know your looks so that you can duplicate it and you can have it identical because the idea is it's seamless. Mm -hmm. that, that you guys don't know when you watch it that there was a time lapse between <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that goes into it. And also I talk to every actor. I contact them and say, hey, this is who I am. This is my position. I need to know if you have any allergies to any mm. makeup, to mm -hmm. any hair products, if I'm doing the overall thing. If it's just makeup, then I'm going to ask them just for makeup and the hair department will take care of the other. You know, mm -hmm. it just depends on how the breakdown is. And, you know, do you have any um, allergies to anything that would be used within a makeup trailer? Um, mm. You know, right. Perfumes. Because you don't want to have an actor have an allergic reaction because one of your team is wearing perfume. That's actually a no-no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a lot of people, if they're new and they don't understand that, will come into the trailer with it and we can have allergic reactions. Well, that's mm -hmm. not good. you know. So there's that. I want to know if they have a preference, if there's a makeup preference that they have going on, mm -hmm. if they've got a concern. Maybe they had a photo facial done and now they're peeling and they didn't realize they were going to get this gig right here and right. we have this issue. I want to know that so that I can prepare for it. And mm -hmm. we don't always have a lot of time to prepare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a lot of times I'm shipping stuff to site. I'm ordering from places and having it go to production before I'm there, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm afraid if I have it shipped to me, it won't make it and things wow. like that. So you just try to figure all those things out ahead of time so that you can head something off. What's the time between starting on a project and actually starting production or filming? Usually for hair and makeup, if we're very fortunate, about a month. You do all if, that in a month. <laughs> all that in a month. Wow. Um, and that's if you have, a, that's, like I said, if you're very fortunate. A lot of times it's two weeks. Sometimes it's less than that, which means I hit the ground running. And I'm con another thing I like to do, too, if it's especially a production company or a director I'm not used to, I try to make an appointment to sit down for like five to ten minutes with them when I'm on site mm -hmm. in the prep day to where I can talk with that director and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Are we on the same page? Mm. That's what I like to do. And some people I've worked with enough that I kind of know. Mm. But if I have any questions, then I also try to get that done before production starts. So what would you say is the most challenging makeup that you've had to do? Well, what's fun about that is, uh, is it's not technically a makeup, mm -hmm. but it has to do with a look. When we shot Mom's Night Out, I don't know how many have seen that. The yep. Irwin Brothers Watched did that, that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. The storyline in that movie is a huge chunk of it is one long continuous day. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So <laughs> it is the same look in essence, but it's this is shot for weeks and it's one long continuous day. And at the same time, she's devolving throughout this day oh, yeah. where we start here. They got glammed up for their night out and then it goes downhill. Yeah. I mean, at times <laughs> they even have 
Yeah, sometimes they even have their head out the window. Yes. So that impacts. Okay. Yeah, so it's like this devolving, but at the same time, it is one singular look. And we had to make sure that those looks matched enough all the way through. And this is weeks of it, <laughs> you know, to do it. So to me, that was harder than necessarily doing a look mm -hmm. per se and rolling into it. That's actually been the harder thing for me to do. Wow. But as Bravo. As, yeah. Because... It looked like one continuous day, <laughs> um, so incredible. And then thank it, you. I'm assuming makeup is also includes things like in fireproof, where the firemen are dirty. Dirty. And the, oh yes. Anything so. that touches the skin, mm. that kind of goes into makeup realm. Now, when you get on a union set, it can get a little more ticky about what type of makeup artist does what parts of the body. Uh -huh. um, you can have your special effects person that's doing one thing. You can have a body artist that uh -huh. if it's like certain parts of the arms or the legs that may fall under that category. Uh, you can have, if they're getting contacts put in, you can have an eye mm. technician that's doing that and that's all that person does is to come in, put them in, take them out, that's it. But that's their sole job, uh -huh. you know. You can have here, is going to be hair and makeup. So if it's facial hair, that's makeup. Mm. It's not hair. That's makeup. Oh. This is hair department. So in the neckline, that's hair department. So it's it's like very mm. much these lines that are sort of kind of blurred, but not at the same time, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we have to know a little bit of everything. And if you're on a very small indie type shoot, mm -hmm. A lot of times you are both <laughs> or you're over both and having to function and see and do, which in those cases, I always try to have someone who is licensed mm. on set because you never know when you're going to have to have a haircut to keep up with the continuity. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of young filmmakers, they don't really understand that. I'm like, you guys don't understand how much hair can grow between the six weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it, you, you trust me, you need a licensed person here because yes, I can say, hey, they need a haircut, but legally I can't do it. So I have to have someone that is to be able to do that and be legal in you know wherever we're shooting because all 50 states that's mm -hmm. a law would you also cover up uh tattoos give tattoos or is there ever a time where a tattoo is partly you because of its makeup but partly someone else because then it falls into hair or something like that no it's always under makeup that's always going to okay. be in, always going to be in <laughs> that zone but um, fortunately, there are companies out there and another part of Mom's Night Out, I don't know why that's all of a sudden, it's on my brain today, I guess, but the tattoos that were on Trace Atkins, yes. he mm -hmm. has no tattoos in real life. Mm -hmm. Really? I put those on him and that was produced by a company called Tinsley Studios in LA. Mm -hmm. You may have seen Tinsley novelty tattoos that you can purchase. Usually they're out around Halloween or stuff, or you can find them in some makeup stores even in Atlanta now that are Tinsley products, but these are the professional line. Okay. So we had them created specifically for Trace based off of his measurements. So good. And then we applied them on there. So I basically, those are my tattoos that I put on him for it. I didn't hand draw them because for time's sake, you can imagine what that would have done to our day. It would have killed us. So these, it took about, I would say 45 minutes really to get them on maybe a little longer, because he had them everywhere. Yes, you know, he did. Here, 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 fingers, you know, all of that, mm -hmm. and to get them on. But these are designed to last between three and seven days. They're designed oh. for film. You have to have duplicates just in case worst case scenario mm. happens and you have to remove something and put it back on. That's just to protect you during production because you can't go, oh, hey, can you send me another one of those from LA and have it get to the, you know, the coast and have it right. So you got to you have it, year. yeah, <laughs> you know. So we have all these extras for that. But a lot of times you can take makeup to fill in if you mm. start getting a crack or a tear and then you reseal it and do it and powder it and all these different things so that it, it looks legit. But I felt really good. My daughter was on that set with me helping out and she went to set because I was still back doing something and was just out hanging out and the camera guys knowing she was my daughter said, hey, which tattoos are real and which ones aren't on Trace because they thought he had tats. And she goes, none of them are. And they were doing double takes. So that's how good Tinsley Studios is wow. at what they do. Because it's like a peel and stick almost type application. Mm -hmm. And they look very realistic. I've had to do the hand drawing a few times. And I've done a few of those on some movies. Um, much prefer to be able to <laughs> do the other. Wow. But yeah. that's. Yeah. I say bravo to you that they ask if they were all, you know, which were his actual tattoos and what you put on. So that's incredible. Mary, I've enjoyed this. I feel like I could sit here for so much longer <laughs> and 
ask so many more questions and learn more, but I want to be uh, respectful of your time. So we'll go ahead and uh, lean into a lightning round. Okay. Um, so what do you do for enjoyment when you're not on set? Well, I like listening to music. Mm -hmm. um, usually Christian is my favorite genre, so I'll listen to that. Occasionally I slip into the 80s because that was when I, was, I grew up, you mm -hmm. know, and just occasionally that pops into my head for the, mm -hmm. something. But usually I like contemporary Christian and I like to sing. I, at one point in my life, was a music major, oh. <laughs> vocal performance, so that's oh, kind of nice. my thing that I enjoy and do. But I also like scrapbooking. Nice. That's my fun. I like photography. I like playing around with that. Nothing... Nothing in professional realm by any stretch, but I do like to play with it and even ordered a little macro lens that you can put on your iPhone so I could go play mm -hmm. taking photos of things. <laughs> yeah. That's Very fun. Cool. Did you binge anything during during stay at home? Actually, I did not because Mary hasn't stayed at home. Mary's oh. been working this whole time. Awesome. God had made provision for me. Um, even before I knew anything about COVID hitting and that kind of thing, I got a job that was like a second job to do in between uh, film gigs. A friend of mine was a manager of Harbor Freight, and she kept putting out on the like Facebook and things, hey, I need people to come you know, to work. Who needs a job? And I thought, well, that would be something to do in between. So I messaged her and said, hey, you know what I do for a living? You know, Would you consider hiring me? And she's like, yeah, come on. So I did, and I started doing that, and I would leave and do a film and come back and that kind of thing. And then COVID hit, and they're considered essential personnel. Because we supplied like face mask and the shields and the gloves to our, you know, first responders and to our local hospitals. And then we were doing things that have there for our firemen and our police officers and all these different things. Wow. So it became, even though the state was mandatorily shut down, we were still open. And I've been working like full time or overtime hours through the whole thing, with the exception of when I left to go to Tennessee to shoot a short film and back again. So I've probably worked more hours consistently <laughs> during COVID than I have at any other time. But God took care of that where I didn't have an income issue. And so many of my fellow filmmakers, mm -hmm. especially in my department, mm -hmm. they're hurting because they've lost all income. And, you know, even their secondary stuff, most of them would do like weddings or other mm -hmm. type venues that would be hair and makeup. Well, all of that shut down too. Mm -hmm. So I have been well provided for and I'm very thankful. So. What a blessing. And not only for that, it's been a blessing to have you here with us today. Thank you so much. And I've enjoyed it. Yeah, yes, Thank too. you for having me, and thank you guys for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for checking out this Against the Tide media video. And you're probably asking yourself, how can I watch more great interviews? Well, you're in luck because Against the Tide media's YouTube channel has tons of great interviews. You'll find chatting with the chosen interviews, 53 questions with Raina, Zoom rooms, host interviews, and us talking back with Tara and Bart. While you're there, like this video, hit subscribe, and click on notifications so you won't miss an interview. And don't forget to like Against the Tide Media on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Thanks again for watching. And then we will get started with just a small intro. And I will then... say I do feel probably like looking towards you when I talk. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit, but I'm probably going to be more. That here. sounds great. That's perfect. Right. Awesome. That feels more conversational yes, and like we're friends, and I like that more of a living room instead of a stage. Too. And tell me when we start this. I think you can start it anytime. Yeah, time. we'll okay. just start ours now as well. All right. These are both, you feel right, like the recording? Mm -hmm. Should I see something? Because I pushed the button and I want to make sure it's on. Does it say, I don't see anything. Should I hit it again? Is it, is it totally blank? Blank? Yeah. Okay. On the side, there's a power button. Other side, there's a power button. Just pull uh, it down. Okay, now power's on. Yeah, and then just hit the record red button. Okay. And then ours has an REC at the top. Okay, we're good. Okay, all right. Um,
So I'll go ahead and clap. Did you want to pray first? Um, or do you want to pray? I think I'll this. clap and then pray. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's pray. Oh, do we want to set the timer? And then I'm hearing a... S don't know. Me? <laughs> Maybe my stomach growling. Oh. <laughs> It's Mine like, too. All of a sudden, it's just like growling like crazy. Sometimes. I have a salad over there that I've not been able to get to. <laughs> okay, so let me get my book open first before my shoes. Maybe making the weirdest noises. <laughs> and then Sweet. we're um, serving as volunteers, and so yes, it's been because of the coffee shop area. <laughs> yes. like, yeah. All right, my new favorite people, coffee people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Do you feel comfortable if we get started here in a sure. moment? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? Hey, Against the Tide media viewers. And we're welcoming today, we're welcoming to our interview today. We're thrilled to be joined by someone who, oh, I'm sorry. Can we start over? We again? sure can. Okay. Isn't it great when we can yes. just um, be yeah. relaxed enough to just start things <laughs> over? We need to. Hey, Against the Tide media viewers. Welcome to... One more time. <laughs> Take three. That's we right. are going to get this. <laughs> hey, Against the Tide media viewers. Welcome to Talking Back with Tara and Barb. I'm Tara. And I'm Barb. And we're here this week at the Christian Worldview Filmmakers Guild and Film Festival. Thank you so much. And I've enjoyed it. Yeah, yes, thank, thank you too. for having me. And thank you guys for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Before, Before we carry on, on um, I really stumbled over this beginning line. I'm not sure what happened. I think I would, I would love to be able to do this again. Do you mind? The, the whole intro? I, I think so. Okay. Are you okay with that? I, I, don't, I don't know what happened there. I maybe was, I don't know, but I just think we should just take it from the top. I also so. did with the Christian Worldview. Christian Worldview Filmmakers yes, Guild. There's a lot of words there. <laughs> Okay, when you're ready. Hey, Against the Tide media viewers. Welcome to Talking Back with Tara and Barb. Thanks for talking to us today. Thanks, and hi, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that was right. fun. Um, so, one, of the, one thing we can do is um, to shut off the mic. So, you can just start by um, stop. The right. stop. Or stop. Yeah. Pause. The right. stop. Or, or stop because that will actually stop the recording. Okay. There we go. And then, whenever you want to, you can unwire yourself. Okay. And we will go play with cameras. And so, we're not paying attention to. Oh, I'm all done. <laughs> Already done. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so, 